Divine Truth Information. In the following presentation titled August 2018 Announcements, News and Information, Jesus and Mary discuss what has been happening in their life over the past six months, provide an update about Divine Truth event schedules, discuss their current projects and priorities, and provide information about the upcoming assistance groups. This session was recorded on the 29th of August 2018 from 11.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Part 1 Well, hi and welcome everyone. This is our Jesus and Mary's uh, August 2018 news, announcements and updates. It's been a while <laughs> since we did one. <laughs> Yeah. It's been about 18 months probably, has it? Or? No, we did one, uh, I think, in March or something like that, but that was for 18 months, that one. Ah. Sort of <laughs> this one's been for the last, well, it's now nearly six, isn't it? it Five is. months or something like it that. Is, yeah. yeah, We're trying to do these at least semi-regularly <laughs> just to keep everybody up to date with what's actually happening. Yeah. yeah. If people do want to stay up to date, I do try to also write regular written updates on my blog which you can find at mary.divinetruth.com. Mm. So it's the same as our website, which is divinetruth.com, just with a Mary dot in the front. Mm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, probably the first thing that we want to do, which is what we always want to do, is thank each of you who have donated to us. Yeah. Uh, it's really... Yeah, there, there's a lot of things we're doing with donations now, isn't there? Yeah. Like, because... It, um, Obviously, we're able to also help out God's way quite a lot with, with things. So, so that means that a lot of our donations are also going towards, obviously, all the machinery and all the servers and all those things. But it's also going towards some uh, people who are volunteering full time now. Yeah. So that means that uh, we're, we're trying to help them out with, with you know, living expenses and things like that. So obviously having the donations come regularly like that is helping for us to pay them regularly as well. Yeah, and even though God's Way is a separate organisation in and of itself, part of God's Way's mission and objectives is actually to provide services to Divine Truth. And that's all really, really, really happening. A lot of the volunteers or the members in God's Way are volunteering directly to help us with our production and our yeah. uh, goals and objectives. Yeah. Uh, as well as focusing on some other uh, environmental and uh, human life kind of projects within the not-for-profit God's Way. Yeah. So. And at the moment in God's Way, we'll talk more about God's Way later, mm. but at the moment in God's Way, there are five uh, members receiving a stipend mm. and myself and Mary, uh, as well as Catherine Spence and Eloisa Litton Hitchens, uh, assist the payment of those stipends. So we we go a three-way share mm -hmm. uh, paying those stipends. So Eloisa litton Hitchens and Catherine Spencer are also sharing and paying the stipends. So um, so that means that we're able to have f five people working pretty much, uh, you know, what we classify as full-time <laughs> in, in doing this work for God's Way and also Divine Truth. But we're hoping that that, you know, we can make that obviously a lot more people eventually but the two things that depends upon one is the condition of the people uh, which obviously is the thing that is the most critical thing and then the second thing it depends upon is whether we have the funds to actually do that yeah. so so receiving donations like we do gives us the ability to actually distribute those funds to people who are assisting us. Yeah. Mm. And you called it a stipend there. Really, I think we decided on subsidy because it's, it's not designed to, we don't want to take away each of our volunteers' uh, independence in terms of their or, financial yeah, situation. Or their responsibility yeah. to generate, um, you know, if they, if they deal with their financial matters and they also have a passionate desire to share God's truth, eventually people will recognise that and, and donate to them directly. Mm -hmm. And the more that's donated to them directly, the less we need to give as a subsidy. Yeah. And then we can look at giving other people that subsidy that we receive. Yeah. And so we're hoping that we can build sort of the God's Way organisation 
and uh, all of its uh, detail and all of what it does, which we'll talk about later, yeah. uh, by using sort of this method of firstly getting it kickstarted, mm -hmm. and then hopefully as people receive the benefits of uh, of all of the things that we're doing voluntarily, and mm -hmm. um, people will recognise those benefits and then help us along the way financially to keep those people who are doing all that work uh, fed and fed and housed and <laughs> looked after. <laughs> yeah, we know people have to to live and. Yeah. and uh, everyone's donations uh, is helping us to live while we do this work that we really believe in, but also now helping other people to live while they yeah. assist us in that work. So that's wonderful. Yeah, and most of our donations at this stage uh, probably go towards other things. Like other, yeah. you and I, we basically just keep a two thousand dollars a month, which is what mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we can comfortably live on here in Australia, and uh, and the rest of the uh, of the money we receive goes towards all of those other projects and things that are going on so and there's quite a lot of them there's a lot of environmental projects there's a lot of construction projects now happening as well uh, so we've got construction underway now and uh, renovations of different places are going on at the moment and uh, and then on top of that there's also a lot a lot of uh, other sh like information sharing type projects that we're also undertaking as well so there are a lot of projects that do take a significant amount of funds besides the payment of subsidies to volunteers. Mm. Um, and alongside a Divine Truth's regular running expenses, which right. there yeah. are regular ongoing expenses. Yeah, well, we, are, yeah. we have now around, uh, well, there's around 12 servers that we look after, as well as about 20 computers and, and so forth. And we've got software and hardware and all those other things looking after as well. So obviously, it does take quite a lot of funds to keep everything operational. Mm -hmm. And so most of the funds received, you just go towards that. And some go towards uh, setting up our new events as well, which we'll talk yeah. about in a minute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'd right. like to thank everyone, hey, for that, yeah. vo those volunteer, those donations, because if we didn't have the regular donations, you can't do a lot of regular things and yeah. you can only do things when you have the funds to do them. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're very appreciative. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about our events, Divine Truth events now. So um, a little while ago, I actually announced on my blog, which I mentioned earlier, that we were going to hold a public seminar. So a free public seminar, similar to what we used to do all of the time uh, five or six years ago, uh, just on the, uh, for one weekend on the Sunshine Coast where anyone can come and uh, hear, hear us speak. Unfortunately, we weren't able to find a venue. Yeah, not a suitable venue. For, yeah. the, the, a lot of, uh, if we talk a bit about Let's... why we weren't able to find a venue, we, we've looked at like, you know, l literary scores of venues, you know, mm -hmm. like, so um, most of them have a huge amount of lighting problems. And because we want to film our events, uh, having big lighting problems always causes us major difficulties. Mm -hmm. So uh, almost every uh, event uh, venue we looked at had major lighting issues for a start. Mm -hmm. And then we have to also look at things like parking and other things. You know, there are free events in a lot of places, particularly on the coast now. They want to cater and do a lot of other things which we don't want to do. We just want to pay for the venue. They build in a lot of additional costs, which is how they do their business. Yeah. But it's not really it's not our suitable for style. us. Yeah, and, and then um, and because we're providing for free events, obviously you, we are to a degree conscious of the cost per day, because mm -hmm. uh, obviously if the cost is exorbitant, and um, and we've got significant costs because we're not just paying for the two days of the event, but we usually have to pay for anywhere up to four da days or even five days before the event just to get all of our gear set up properly, uh, which is our major problem, getting <laughs> the gear set up properly. <laughs> and, and maybe we could also mention here that um, in the past, we had a, when we did these public events, we had a smaller setup. We didn't do live switching, uh, which live switching assists us immensely post-production in terms of getting the, the well, material. Post-recording. Post-recording, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, to get the material up. In a, in a quicker time frame. Yeah, but we um, are prepared to not do live switching if we have to, but, but we do need to at least get our lighting good enough to, to even have decent camera shots of the audience and, and, and also ourselves presenting as well. Yeah. 
And that's very, very difficult in many places. Yeah, yeah and also um, the reason that we are building in a bit of time in terms of the rental of the room, bef- aside from those two days, is because we have almost a brand new team of technical assistants and they they're not familiar with us doing live events no. they're not familiar with the equipment and so it does take a lot of time especially from yourself doesn't yeah, it to help them, to help them to learn training so when we were considering doing this seminar in october we knew that okay we almost need seven days it would be a training opportunity but we need a suitable venue then we need a time that's not busy we need a suitable cost, we need, yeah. and then we need to get everyone over there, do a lot of training, have the event and go home. Yeah, and a lot of the venues have now put up, even ones that are local government venues have put up their prices significantly. So before we could hire venues for around about 120 to $150 a day here in Australia, but now it's more like $1,000 a day here in Australia. And when you're looking at uh, seven day high, then obviously it's seven or eight thousand yeah. dollars before you begin. Mm-hmm. And if the lighting's no good and 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 the sound isn't any good, you're not going to get any recordings from it. So yeah. we need to, you know, if you're going to pay that kind of funds, you, we want to see the lighting pretty good and the sound pretty good. And and so we looked at, as I said, lot, lots and lots of venues. And uh, Paulina, she was sort of pulling her hair out with different problems with each venue. But in the end, uh, after we, we narrowed it down to a few venues, but after myself and Mary looked at them, after we both looked at them, hey, baby, yeah. so just like it, none of them were going to be any good for filming. Um, so so uh, we're a bit disappointed about yeah. that. Yeah, but, but also in our long-term view, we, we're hoping that we build our own venue at some point mm-hmm. and then we won't have all those problems. But up until that time, we've now got to decide well do we try for a venue that's well lit and and has some ha, has some decent lighting just within itself and uh and hopefully in the process of getting a decent enough venue with decent enough lighting we standardize on that venue for any any like one-off uh, events we want to run in the future but we're still having a struggle finding a suitable venue of a size big enough to do that so most of the venues we've looked at have been quite like too small mm. uh, for for weekend events. We need a venues that sit from two to three hundred for our weekend events, and most of the venues are too small. Mm. And then the ones that are large have are terribly dim and have terrible lighting, so much so that you can't even see the eyes of people when you're filming. So mm. you know, that's not much good. And and we need to you know in the end we don't want to present a presentation only to have only the you know audio available to people uh, because the, because the recording isn't any good yeah mm. yeah and for this time in october we decided look we've got the assistance group which we'll talk about in a minute coming up at the start of next year how much time do we invest and sink into now researching even more venues to try and find somewhere and then doing all the logistics. So yeah. what we decided was for October, we would put it on the shelf, but we aren't opposed to finding somewhere in the new year and coming to a location somewhere. And it doesn't even have to be in Queensland. Like it could be in, so it needs to be somewhere where there is a major airport or major airports available, yeah. but it doesn't have to be in Queensland. It could be in New South Wales or something yes. like that. But but it does need to have specific requirements. And yeah, and if anyone would like to help us find a venue, we have some specific requirements noted down, Then, and I can work with you to, to let you know what they are, and if you want to do the on-the-ground research and are willing to be um, quite picky, as we are, about what we do need, mm. then that would be wonderful. That, some people have offered to do that, and that's a really big help um in terms of our time so um, it takes a huge amount of time for people to go and look at the venues look at all the problems negotiate prices look at the potential of how often we're going to use the thing and because uh, these are mostly for one-off events although again we we were looking at a bigger venue for our age for our assistance groups as well Mm -hmm. and because we do have more people enrolling for the assistance groups but again we we couldn't find a suitable bigger venue Mm -hmm. that's as suitable as the one we already have that's smaller and so that means that there will be a limit on the amount of people who can come to the 
AGs in, in uh, February, March next year as well. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, let's get on and talk about the assistance groups then. Uh, our next assistance group is called Understanding Sin and Its Causes. So juicy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're both really looking forward to those groups, aren't we? Yeah, I haven't started prepping them really at this stage. So uh, hopefully um, we've just had too much uh, other things on. Yeah. But uh, we're going to have to start prepping them very shortly. Otherwise, we'll be behind the eight ball there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we hope to, you know, get them prepped. Um, well in advance, but at least we can tell people the, the logistical details now yeah. because they've all been finalised. Yeah. yeah. So so I can say that we've confirmed the dates that as they're advertised on our Eventbrite pages, the, the groups will be going ahead. And I've just sent out an email to everyone who's already enrolled in those groups about the details about accommodation and costs and so on. Obviously, we don't charge ourselves for the groups, but we do make available the details of how much the expenses are averaged, our expenses are for holding the group, averaged out over the number of attendees, so that if mm. people do want to make um, a donation on their own behalf towards those, they have a bit of an idea of how much it costs us to do those things. So, yeah. so that's all publicised. Because we've now finalised the date, some people have actually um, thought about it and said, oh, I can't actually attend on those dates. So some people have uh, dropped out, for want of a better word. So there are just a very few, I'm finding people are enrolling, other people removed. So there's at any one time, there's about four or five spaces available uh, in the first group. Uh, which that's what it is as it stands today. So if you are interested in attending, you can enrol via our Eventbrite page, which is mm. linked on the Divine Truth website. And the second group is completely full, I think. Isn't it, it is at yes. this stage. So yeah. So we've really only got slots available in the first group yeah. and there's not many slots yeah. available. Yeah. And because of our venue size, yeah. we, we can't make any more available because we haven't, as we said just earlier, we haven't found a suitable venue <laughs> to get a larger size into it. So. So that's unfortunate, but the material should be really good. We're looking yeah. forward to delivering the material. And uh, and the subject matter is going to be fairly confronting. So people are going to need to be prepared emotionally to, to a fair degree to allow for that confrontation to occur. And it's going to be very much based around the last assistance group we had in the mm -hmm. sense that because the last assistance group, we learned about all of God's laws and God's principles that govern God's laws. And obviously, sin is all about breaking the laws. Yes. So, so we need to understand the laws that we're breaking to understand <laughs> sin. And so obviously, there's going to be a linkage between the, the last assistance group that we ran and this next one. So it would pay for people to revise the material, particularly in that last group. But, but also, there'll be references, quite a lot of references to the first two groups mm. as well about will and desire. In, in, which we covered in the very first group, and also about how your addictions and facade and everything interact and generate sin. Mm. So, so obviously, you know, the, the, these have all been done in sequence. So we'd recommend for people to watch them again if they haven't already done so, watch them for the first time mm -hmm. and uh, make sure that they're well prepared for the group coming up. Yeah. And uh, the group will be a little less intense in the terms of time because we've tried to cut out around four to six hours out of the material just to get the time down a bit more. We found that uh, everyone was getting quite exhausted mm -hmm. uh, in the last uh, couple of groups that we've had due, due to the amount of material. And uh, with this one, uh, there will also be a simplification of some of the material mm -hmm. so that, um, so it's not going to be an exhaustive discussion about understanding sin and its causes, uh, and its causes but it will hopefully help people understand a lot more about God's perspective about, you know, when we're sinning and when, you know, when we're not. Mm. I, mm. I feel the way that we've designed the assistance groups, or especially you've designed the assistance groups, um, and specifically the format, provides a really great opportunity for people to take almost a personal study approach to what you've been teaching for a lot of years. That's my experience of it anyway. Like you and I present a lot of material here in the studio. You've done a lot of public seminars, which are all almost um, great ways to sort of personally come to start to intellectually understand and engage with, with God's truth. 
but I, my approach with the assistance groups, because I didn't attend the first two, um, and even though I knew the material before it was presented, was I found there's this great opportunity to really sit with one theme, uh, watch the material, watch both of the groups almost in tandem, mm -hmm. sit with my journal, really reflect on where am I personally at in my soul condition in relation to, these, to this theme mm -hmm. that's being presented. And it, it can be very impactful for one's personal progression. And um, I feel that that's the benefit of videoing them. You can do that while you're there at the group in person, but then you can also revise afterwards, it, almost with the same format. Take mm. a chunk of your life, a chunk of time, and just sit with that material, go over it, reflect on it. And it, I feel it's a wonderful way to go deeper into your own personal reflections and growth. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, the material, I think, will be very beneficial mm -hmm. to people. Obviously, it's a part, um, there's an eight, this is an eight series presentation, obviously, and we've done three. Yes. And this will be the fourth. So we're, we're, after this group, we'll be halfway through the material we want to present. Um, but uh, this particular group is important because it helps you identify where you're sinning. Mm -hmm. the, the world's view of sin and God's view of sin is completely different. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the world has a lot of judgment about certain things that are not sin. Mm -hmm. But also the world has a very uh, dark view of the word sin mm -hmm. as well and, and, and its connotations. And so, you know, there's often a lot of judgment associated with even the word itself and so forth. So hearing the word sin is going to be, you know, d difficult for some, you mm. know, to, to understand. And, that. and it's not going to be like a Bible discussion or, or a Christian discussion about that word. It's going to be the actual facts associated with how God sees things, mm. not how we on earth have perceived things historically. So, so in terms of the content, it's going to be really good content, I feel, and also help people see a lot more realistically how they're really going. What we find is that most people have a, usually a highly inflated sense of their own uh, ability to understand divine truth and, uh, and, and therefore believe themselves to be doing a lot often better than, than from, from the law's perspective they really are. Mm -hmm. And the key is to not judge that but to be realistic about that, to be logical about that. And that's what this particular, uh, you know, see this particular presentation or, or group um, in, in the series is trying to achieve, help, mm. helping us to be a lot more realistic about what's really going on for us and why it is that we find it so hard to love. Because mm. it, it's, the, it's the things we do that, that create sin that are the reasons why love we find love so difficult even to receive but certainly also to give yeah mm. yeah so in terms of content that's the content so hopefully you'll enjoy the content that we deliver <laughs> that that uh, um, you know we try we'll try and deliver it in a way that's uh, engaging but also you know you, you give you some reflection but uh, there's also the matters regarding the logistics of the of the of the assistance group that probably like to raise a little one is is that we've already discussed a bit about the costs of them and the reason why the the costs are uh, fairly high is because we have the venue high and most venues now are charging uh, significant funds to hire their venues and then we've also got a team of six people that we have to house accommodate and feed for that entire period for that 30 for us it's a 31 day period yeah. that we have to hire the venue we have a five day setup period. We have a five day break in the time in the men, in the middle, but it's not much of a break usually because we've got a we've got a, a lot of chapterization work to do. We've got a lot of data copying to do. We've got uh, and we so we get a bit of a break. We usually have technical problems. We've also got to resolve. So we give ourselves a five day break in the mean to, in the middle of the two groups to do that. And then we've got a pack up period as well to pack all the gear up, pack it all up, and and bring it all back and unpack it and all those kind of things. So for us, it's a major exercise mm. to get a, a group that, which is really only eight days for the participant. Mm. But for us, it's a, like it's a 30 day exercise, getting there, unpacking, getting everything ready, you know, and holding to, the first holding group, them. then having this break, then holding the second group and then packing up. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and then, of course, uh, there's the preparation you and I do, which usually takes us three months before the group. So 
And when I say three months, we usually do a couple of days a week for three months mm. uh, to get all the prep done. And then there's the uh, technical things we've got to resolve. And this particular group, we're going to handle some uh, question and answer things a bit differently to speed mm. up the process and mm. make it more, uh, you know, succinct. succinct and easier to listen to. Yeah. And and in doing that process, there's a few technical things we've got to also sort out. So so when you add all that, it's, a, it's sort of like a major operation to do yeah. these groups for us. Um, and uh, even though there's only like, you know, 50 hours or, or 60 hours of material being presented. Yeah. Um, in the last groups, obviously, there were a bit more than that, but this one we're trying to get it down a bit as well with the amount of material presented. Yeah. So so in the end, the, the logistic, where people can help us with donations is, you know, obviously, to bear in mind, there's all those costs associated with, with the actual group that you don't really see when you're at the mm. group because it's because uh, you're just there and you're participating, you know. So, yeah, that's why, you know, we'd like to thank those of you that do donate towards these groups that we can get them going. And the material we feel is quite essential to get going. And with regard to sin and the causes of sin and also how to resolve sin, we haven't had much, presented much information about these matters in the past. No. So like the last group, which we haven't presented, which we didn't present the information before that group, uh, for the years before then, mm. it gives us an opportunity to present some quite good information that we've wanted to present for ages, but yeah. just haven't had the opportunity to. Or, and we also find that the groups uh, may, uh, are long enough to mean that everyone's not so, I want my answer now type of feeling <laughs> in the group so, that, so they, they can sort of settle with the information better as well. And of course you do a lot of work beforehand in making the outlines available before people even arrive. And yeah. so there's a lot of time, this is what I mean, it, you know, there's so much opportunity to really familiarise yourself with the themes and the topics and the, the truths and then to engage them in a, in a meaningful way, not just often at a public seminar, wow, information is coming to you. you oh, I've got this question, but it's uh, not necessarily giving you time to have a really deep reflection. Fit and reflection, yeah. yeah. And uh, then after the group is finished, we, we come home. A lot of our technical gear here in the studio we use at the group, so we have to re-set up our studio. Mm. But then uh, myself and Lena mostly, uh, have to produce the group and get it up and you know and that involves video production audio production uh getting all of the chapterization sorted out because usually i finalize all the chapterization so while we're at the group there'll be a couple of people doing the chapterization but and they edit it usually at the group but by the time we get back i've then got to look at all of that that usually takes a couple of solid weeks mm -hmm. and then uh, we've got to produce the videos and lena and myself usually do that at this stage there might be other people involved and while that's happening in in this particular group coming up there's going to be another god's way thing going on another event for god's way going on so that means that there's all these other things happening as well straight after the group so yeah um, but then after we've produced the videos the records team in Divine Truth, which um, is led by Barbara McNair, um, they then get all the material that we've produced and all the videos that we've produced and transcribe everything. Mm -hmm. And you imagine how much of a what job that is. Mm -hmm. That usually takes them quite a few months after mm -hmm. the group and her team gets onto that transcription process. And, and then we've got to get all those transcriptions out. So in the end, people will have a complete documentation of the entire group, video, audio, written word in terms of the outlines. They'll also have the PowerPoint presentations and the final uh, transcriptions as well. Yeah. So, so obviously there's a lot of material that comes out when we do a group as well straight mm -hmm. afterwards that there's very few people that share and actually doing aside from the records team, they finish up doing a lot of that written work but all of the video and audio work, and that, that's just down to a few people at this stage who have those skills. Mm. 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 So it's quite a big job. It is. Doing these it groups. Is. So, so it, we're doing them for a reason, and we feel that the reason is, you know, it's, they are, it's so important to understand some of the information if you really want to understand God's laws and principles and how to become a loving person. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So if you'd like to hear more about the God's Way event, hold in there. It's coming up. <laughs> we're going to finish. Uh, we're going to finish. That's the end of our Divine Truth events uh, discussion. Yeah. We'll get on to some more things now about Divine Truth. But after that, we'll talk to you about the God's Way event. Yeah. Hmm. All right. So let's 
update you a little bit about what's been happening in Divine Truth Organisation over the last five months or so. Mm. So one of the major things that's been going on is that uh, or like eight or nine months ago now, um, a, a team of people got together and donated some funds to buy some service for us here. And when I say buy some service, it might sound quite small, but you know, we're spending, they spent over $200,000 on these servers. Um, and the reason why is because of the storage, the data storage yeah, itself. Yeah, could you explain a little bit even servers? Like some, some people know, but a lot of people, what does that mean in real terms? What yeah, well, our, our main problem here is that we collect and store a lot of data. And every day that we record, one day of uh, recording, we store over one terabyte of data. So every day we record, and usually on the average, we record 100 days a year, mm -hmm. there's 100 terabytes of data that gets recorded. We back that up three times. So there's 300 terabytes of data mm -hmm. that we store every year. Mm -hmm. So where most of your donations go towards is data, mm -hmm. like handling data. And we keep a lot of this data and we archive it off, but we also need a lot of it live and particularly God's way needs a lot of it live because we're, we're now starting to look at producing videos where there's an amalgamation of videos over years mm -hmm. of time. And God's way in particular is going to be looking at that. So we had to look at getting a system running where we could store massive amounts of data live and also archive that data so we can continue the archiving of the data processing. And we had to process that data fast because mm. the, the other big problem we have is how slow most systems are, particularly when it comes to networking them. Uh, so we had to set up a, 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 our minimum requirements are a 10 gigabit network, which is which is more than what the average requirement is for, for an average business or anything like that. They usually get away with a one gigabit network mm. in their in to their client machines, whereas for us, uh, we need at least 10 gigabits going to the each each workstation mm -hmm. because there's massive amounts of data getting copied every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we just explained a little bit there because you threw in God's way and we're talking about divine truth. Yep. At the moment, uh, because God's way is just getting started out and a lot of what divine truth has established in terms of procedures, uh, information storage systems and um, frameworks, uh, a lot of that valuable intellectual knowledge and physical infrastructure is being shared with God's way while God's way gets established. So, and, and eventually God's way is probably going to use most of it. Yes. So we uh, in Divine Truth probably use very little of it. Yeah. Our requirements in Divine Truth are much lower yeah. than what the requirements are in God's way. God's yeah. way is storing massive amounts of data and will store far more data in the end than we do in Divine Truth. And so this is an ongoing issue, you know, how much data we store. Yeah. So God, while Divine Truth is kind of doing this upgrade, you, you're doing... Most of it's for God's way. Most of it, God's way is kind of coming under the wing of Divine Truth. Eventually they'll split off again with God's way taking with it a lot of the valuable infrastructure that you've set up yes. and also the the methods for storage and the frameworks for storage will go with God's way. Yes. Um, but at the moment they're kind of... That piggybacking. You, yeah, yeah. that piggybacking on each other because yeah. we've got a lot of shared uh, services, I suppose you'd say, and also shared um, processes that are being refined that mm. need to be refined for both organisations because they, they will both do the same processes. Yeah. So that all being said, you can see over the last six months, we've had a lot of work to do setting all that up when, and particularly myself um, mm. uh, because I'm the only skilled engineer in mm -hmm. our in organisation. I'm the one left to do most of that technical work. So a lot of the work you don't see uh, us doing like is done by myself doing all of this sort of technical work. Yeah, you, you basically from the ground up setting the designing, setting it up physically and in terms of software and configuring on, it, configuring, getting everybody trained, uh, training. And then you, you're the systems administrator as well. Yes, uh, at so the moment. any problem mm. that we have, we, it has to come through you, any networking issue, any changes to the network, any storage issue. It's all really on your shoulders, which is a huge job in and of itself, let yeah. alone all the rest you do for Divine Truth. And if it wasn't for the the t couple of people, two people, uh, the Litton Hitchens um, and also for Catherine mm. Spence, who, who donated all the funds to do all these things, none of them would be possible. So because our normal donations don't cover that kind of expense. No. Um, you know, the amount of money it spent, we spent on the system itself 
um, is our entire year's um, donations. Yeah. So fortunately, they, they bought uh, all this hardware and, and software and everything. But buying it all is only a part of the job. Obviously, mm. you've got to put it all together. Mm -hmm. And nobody here other than myself knows how to put it all together. So that, that became a bit of an issue for me. So uh, I've had a lot of late nights and yeah. long days uh, doing all of that. But it's now getting really close to the end of that. We've now got, so we've now got six main servers here in Australia and, and, uh, and, and four additional servers that are smaller servers. And we've got two in the States and one in Canada uh, that are more about storage, external storage and distribution, mm. because uh, we have to, because uh, our problems here in Australia are we've got this massive amount of data and in Australia, our internet connections are so bad that getting those massive amounts of data up to the internet takes, uh, can take weeks of time, weeks of processing. And um, so what we do instead is we snail mail that. <laughs> It, it, airmail, we, airmail we should say, to, yeah. to uh, the USA yeah. and Eugene Mindel, who looks after to you know he looks after the hardware of two of our servers there and he's housed it in his own house for mm. us and he looks after he, he receives my my data packets and plugs it in and then I can remotely uh, from here in Australia upload everything in a faster way than I could do it from Australia without sending it to the USA. Yeah. So because of the amount of data being handled. So, so now we've got the two servers in the USA handled. And also we've got one server in the, in the Canada, which is basically going to be primarily used to do the synchronization processing. Mm -hmm. So um, for people who are now synchronizing their data, mm -hmm. um, is that another point that we're raising? So it's, yeah, maybe getting on to the next yeah. point there. So I'll, I'll skip that to the next point. Yeah. But if I if I just look at, at the current servers that we have, we're basically storing around about uh, about fourteen hundred terabytes of data. Um, so are we storing that amount, or that's our that's capacity? our capacity? Yeah. But the trouble is, we we need a lot of backups. We need we have a we have a three rotation backup. So the reality is, we're only storing three hundred and sixty terabytes of data and the rest is having to get offloaded onto drives. We have three offline. backup copies yeah. offline. And then if we ever need that again, we've got to reload it again at some point in the future. Yeah. We also have those same servers. Eventually they'll be looking after all of our data processing and all of our accounting and all of the other things as well. So there are multiple use servers and they are fast. Mm -hmm. uh, their copying and backing up is very quick. I'm very happy with that. Uh, because before processes that were taking me, you know, anywhere up to 96 hours now take me you know, a few hours, mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, four hours or six hours right, instead. And when you're talking about these massive amounts of data, you know, you can, you can have a processing going on for weeks yeah. and still not copy at all. Yeah. So, so um, it's great that most of our backups now happen within a night mm -hmm. uh, rather than taking weeks and weeks and weeks to do. So, so it's also speeding up my time a fair bit uh, as well, which is great because that, that means eventually my management side of the time should be quite like tight. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to training someone else to replace me, um, yeah. hopefully um, that'll be a tight sort of a process as well. They'll have an established system to support. Mm. Mm. All right. So it's a big, big job. It's been a big job. And, uh, and because it all happens behind the scenes, most people don't get to see any of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. funny, isn't it? Like a lot of us have emotions where we're like, oh, all the technicals. But it's, I know for myself, uh, just I gain a real appreciation for technology through doing this work with you because really our whole ability to deliver truth, not just to people in person, but the capacity to share it with you know, thousands of people worldwide is all enabled through technology. And mm. if we don't take care of our data in terms of storage and backup and labeling, and that has major impacts on how quickly and effectively we can share information with others. But also mm. there's a lot of other things happening in the works uh, with different ways we want to utilize the data that's already been presented mm. in different formats not just in transcriptions, but in clips and books and all kinds of different things that we we'll won't go into. We'll talk more about that in a minute, yeah. Yeah, um, but that's all enabled through this work that you do 
in the the storage and the planning and the backing up and the yeah. maintaining all of these technical systems. Mm. So mm. I know my eyes usually glazed, used to glaze over, but now I have a greater, deeper appreciation for yeah, what it is. Yeah, it's essential stuff that we need to do, but and God's way is going to need it even more than we need yeah. it in divine truth. So, you know, they're collecting huge amounts of data at the moment and and know where to store it or mm. they haven't had anywhere to store it up to now. So it's really great that our benefactors, mm -hmm. uh, our two major benefactors have donated what they've donated to allow us to get those things set up and going for God's way. Because yeah. if it was just divine truth, we don't need as much. We, we archive off our stuff fairly regularly yeah. and we don't usually go back to old presentations to reproduce them. But in, in God's way is going to be completely different to that. And we'll talk about that in yeah. a minute. Mm. Totally. All mm. right. Well, let's just talk about we've got you've been working on some major updates to the website and the synchronization service. And perhaps you can explain what the synchronization service is, because it's sort of been buried on the website and not everyone really knows about it. Yeah, no, most people probably don't know. But the reality is that if you've got a fast internet connection, that's an unlimited download connection. Mm -hmm. You can actually synchronize all of our data, uh, and I'm talking about our entire website, every video, every audio, every document that we produce. Um, you can synchronize the entire thing down to your local storage down on your computer. So it can be stored offline. So it can be stored offline, and you can actually run the whole thing offline as if you were online. Mm -hmm. So you can watch every video, you can look at every document, you can use the website as if it was online and so forth. Because a lot of people maybe don't even know that via the website, you've got clickable links. You've ordered all of our talks on the website and there's links according to talk for the individual video, the individual transcript and outline. It's all there uh, on the website. I know a lot of people just generally interface with us just directly via YouTube, but yeah. there is a lot of valuable uh there is a lot of value on the website. That's right. And, and, and also, it's not exactly what I want it to be at this no. stage. Um, and we're working towards that. Yeah. And this is why there's this major update. The major update, there's a three stages in a major update to get to the end result. And the end result that we want is that we have an, a, a website that where you can search keywords, you can search anything, and it will list every single piece of material that, you know, that we've ever produced. In relation to that, into topic, relation right? to that topic, it's like a search engine within the or a search function within the website because there is so much information that is housed on the website that is hard to find. Well, it is hard to find because there's so much, yeah. and and also because you know how do you logically order it? Sometimes yeah. you like we do order a lot of it by date, but sometimes you don't want it ordered by date; you want it ordered by other things. So. So the end result is that we want a website and, and it can't be a standard sort of a website that the average people do because we want to have the website run offline. Mm. And what that means is it has to be a static website. Mm. It can't be an active one. It can't have a background database. Mm -hmm. Now that causes a lot of maintenance issues for us um, and which we're trying to fix by creating a database that downloads when you download the website. Mm. And the downloaded database then can be searched is our uh, uh, that's our final goal yeah. so and and we're right near that goal now we're, we're, we're uh, this second stage which i've just completed is renaming every file to be consistent mm -hmm. so now there's 20 or thirty thousand links on our website and every single file has been named consistently and every single link has been named consistently and so when i do the new update which is in the next few weeks coming um, it also means the entire synchronization process has to be changed because every single file name has changed. Mm -hmm. Every single one. There's yeah. not a single file that is the same name as it used to be before. So it appears as the same name on the website, but the... Uh, uh, no, uh, even on the website, a lot of things are changing. Changed. But but the, you know, the material is the same old material, yeah. but it's just been named to be consistent with our new naming conventions. Mm -hmm. And we need consistency in our naming conventions because we have a database being generated for God's way and divine truth material yeah. so that people can search anything. Yeah. Um, that's our primary goal. It also then would mean that in the new website, to update the website, all I've got to do is update some data and the website automatically changes. Whereas at the moment, I've actually got to update the website. Now, because I'm the one doing that amongst all these other things I'm yeah, doing, yeah. often that gets delayed. 
And so this will improve uh, how many updates we can do with the website mm. per year and so forth. Mm. So, so the synchronization service is changing markedly and the website is changing. This is the second phase mm -hmm. of the change for the, for the website. But the synchronization service is not going to have any major changes after this, mm -hmm. aside from potential location changes. So what do people need to know in terms of the changes to the synchronization service? Well, basically all the data is completely different. So the problem with that is it means that when they connect to the new synchronization service, they're going to get a completely different data set than they had before. That means that every single person who connects to the synchronization service will download 1.6 terabytes of data from that service. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, that's going to take quite some time mm -hmm. to do that. We've only got a 100 megabit link to the, neck on that, uh, to, the, to the net on that server. And so at 12 megabytes a second, it takes one day for one person. Mm. And if there's 30 people, it's obviously there's going to need to be some patience because it's probably going to take 30 days for everybody mm. to get synced. Now, that's how many people are online at the moment. Mm. And, and most people don't know about the service. And once people know about the service, then more and more people can come online. So what we're suggesting here is that uh, if those people are, who are synchronizing could just be patient with the service and, and also they have the option of seeding their data by sending their drives to us, we copy it and then they go back and make sure that the service is set up for that particular data store. Now, do you mind if I say that in really, really simple terms sure. now? <laughs> sure. So with the synchronization service, if you've already been downloading our data, it will have a specific file structure that it's populated on your drive, uh, which and that's then every, changed. yeah, every time we add something new, it just goes off, searches for the new thing and downloads it and puts it into the existing structure and it doesn't re-download any of the stuff that you've already got there. That's right. Now, because all of this stuff has changed, when, it, when you, the service goes off to check if there's anything new, it'll view everything as new, That's which right. means it wants to download everything all over again, which will need to happen. Once it's happened once, it won't happen again. It'll just go back to that same service. And, and, I, and I must say that the current configuration of the current system of the synchronization service that people have had up till now mm -hmm. all has to change anyway. Yes. Because because it's completely different configuration. The website's completely different configuration. The way we store data now is completely different as well. And this is all to simplify how we do data in the future. Yes. Yeah. It's 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 it has to happen. Yeah. Now it's happened. Uh, you have some options. So if you want to have an offline copy of all of our material uh, and you want to use a synchronization service you can send us your uh, a new disc or even your old disc and we'll put everything that has changed already all of the existing data in the new structure onto that disc and send it back to you uh, then they have to make sure they configure their synchronization service so that it matches the new data right mm -hmm. yeah and you have instructions about how to do that on the new website update. Yes, yes. So um, just make sure you do that. And then it is only ever just going to download the, the smaller amounts that we add over time. Which it's a which, good option. Which is people. anywhere from 20 to 40 gigabytes a month at this stage. Yeah. Um, because we're, we're also now generating clips. Yes. And that is also now going to be synchronized. So, so very rapidly, the synchronization service, instead of storing 1.6 terabytes like it does now, very rapidly within a few months, it's going to be storing 2.8 terabytes yeah. or thereabouts. And so people are going to have to look at getting bigger drives, obviously, because a two terabyte drive won't store the entire synchronization. Yeah. And you'll either have to decide to split up your synchronization mm -hmm. onto different drives, or you'll have to get bigger drives. You know, that that's yeah. a because we've just got so much data. That's, yeah. that's the yeah. problem without having so much data. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't think that's a problem. I think it's good. But yeah. If a person has a Linux, um, like a, what we call a Linux NAS or a network attached storage or something like that at their home, then they could consider also configuring that service to download the data. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Resilio Sync, which is the synchronization service we currently use, is capable of running pretty much on any operating system. Mac, PC, as well as Linux, as well as versions of Linux like mm -hmm. FreeBSD, FreeNAS, and a lot of other and a lot of other uh, versions of Linux as well. So Debian and all these kind of popular versions of Linux, so it syncs to all of them as well. So, so the beauty of the service is it syncs to almost anything. 
even mobile phones. <laughs> but obviously a mobile phone can't store all the data, so you've got to be very selective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to be very careful if you've got limited data access, very careful what you sync from our service because mm -hmm. you can blow data, your data limits out of the water very, very quickly if you're not careful. A lot of people in Europe and the USA are very used to having unlimited data, but in Australia, that's not really a reality for no. most people, which is why a lot of people who live in Australia just send us their disks um, to, to periodically, periodically update, update yeah. and we just send it back and they don't do it via the synchronisation. So, that's right. Yeah. 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 And okay. anybody in the world can do that too. Yeah. You know? Yes, you can. And we're also yeah. happy to buy disks for people here in Australia. And, um, you know, they order a disk and we buy a disk and we synchronise it to our current data and send it off to them, you know, we're also happy to do that for them. Nowadays, it's very difficult for us to do individual copies to USB sticks. So we're actually closing that service. Yeah. And we're also not doing DVDs anymore. And the main reason why we're not is to do individual copies is that it actually takes our time longer mm -hmm. than to set a process off where we just connect a drive in and it automatically senses the driver's there and off it goes and does a copy for a person onto that drive and when it's finished yeah. it tells me and then I just disconnect it and, and uh, repost it back and yeah. repost it back yeah. you know it's uh, uh whereas when we're doing stuff to USB stick you got to work out how big it is and how much you can store and yeah. where you put it and all these different things and so it ends up taking a lot of time so and we, we don't have much time available to us so we're trying to automate every process yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very good so uh Hopefully that gives you some good info on syncing and websites. And um, just watch the site. Jesus will upload the web, the new website and yeah. there'll be new instructions about the synchronization. If all of it went completely over your head, it's all written down. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> you'll be all right. Yeah. yeah, it does assume the synchronization service does assume that you're able to follow some, you know, instructions. Yeah. <laughs> Carefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you find that difficult, you're going to find connecting to the synchronization service difficult. They are technical instructions and you need to follow them carefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're not hard. Yeah. So, you know, the, the new synchronization service developed by Resilio um, is quite easy to actually get operational. You just got to bear in mind that you need some, the, the basic fundamentals are you need to have the same structure we have on our servers if you want us to be able to synchronize data and also do offline copies of data for you. Yeah. 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 Very good. Thank you. Let's talk now. Another major thing that's been happening in Divine Truth is that we're training new staff in our video production processes, which involve switching and chapterization and then video editing after the fact. Yeah. We've been very concerned that we're highly reliant on just a few people. Yeah. And that, that is not good for the long term. You know, in the long term, we're hoping to produce more information, not less. And the problem with being highly reliant on a few people, and particularly when one of those persons is myself, um, we get to a limit of how much more new information we can share yeah. because we don't have enough time to produce it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, recording it is relatively easy. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of sitting down, us, you and me having a chat and yeah. having a few cameras going with some video feeds happening and uh, it all gets recorded. But but that doesn't help anybody because the, the size of these files are too large to actually share. Mm. And so they have to be produced. And it's the production process that is taking a long time. And uh, obviously, you know, that means we need people to help us with that process. Mm -hmm. And we need to be, not be reliant on just a few people. Yeah. And so that requires training. And so we've been spending a lot of time training. In fact, right at this very moment, yeah, two new training. <laughs> two brand new people. Uh, <laughs> Lena's not in the studio. Yeah. We've got Eloisa switching and Barb McNair on the uh, tagging so, for the chapters. Yeah. Uh, and the girls have just gone straight in the deep end this yeah. this week this and week, doing yeah. yeah, doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. so it's a steep learning curve with a yeah. lot of this stuff because it is a you know a lot of it is technical. It's live. It's and it's happening live. So that yes. means that you've got to think on your feet. It's and I and you can't sort of get too involved and, in the information. You've no. got to be involved in your job. Yeah. So that that you know. Most of our people who produce our videos don't get to watch the videos until after they've produced <laughs> <Yes>. the video. <laughs> when they're editing, yeah. if they need to edit. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we really appreciate the volunteers who do that because yeah. it, it really is a wonderful gift to yeah. the world, really. Yeah. And the, these volunteers are highly dedicated people. These are people yeah. who are pretty much with us. Um, you know, they, they have put their whole life 
into it. It's not, it's not just a little thing where they do over the net or anything like that. And because of the extreme amounts of data we're dealing with in terms of sizes, most of it's impossible to do over the internet yeah. anyway. You know, so a lot of people want to help us, but unless you're actually here, it's, mm. a lot of it is impossible to help us because, because of the amounts of data we're handling is quite large. Yeah. And people don't realise that. They, when you get the end result, the data is quite small, but it's all the in-between bit where the data is large, where you've got to produce the data and, and, and you know, store it and all these kind of things where we need everybody close by who are working with us. So these people who are helping us regularly have are close by and they are helping us every day that we do something. Yeah, and mm. what I appreciate about yourself is that you are always thinking about how what we create can be used to its maximum potential. Yeah. And I do feel that a lot of people aren't even even fully aware of all of the provisions that you're continually making not just for right now, but for the future so that people can benefit from what we do talk about and teach. So there even little things like there being chapters in the videos and having um, chapter titles and timings for people so that if they want to skip in a video, um, that's already all being in place. It takes us a bit of time in the production side of things, but it's a great feature and it also enables clips to be made really automatically. Yeah, so, so in the not too distant future, we're going to be having a huge influx of new clips. And you're probably watching this video on the uh, Divine Truth main channel, but there's a whole Divine Truth Clips channel, which is just designed for people who want to watch a short amount on a very specific topic. Subject, yeah. um, uh, most of the clips are 15 to 20 minutes, but sometimes they're that. longer. Some of them are five. Some of them some five. five. Some are yep. one hour because we can't clip them any shorter, <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, but that's a clip, you know, yeah. but that's the way it goes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, and, and all of that is there's a lot of other features. Okay, we can't talk well, about every well, we can, potential. One thing point. I'd like to mention to everyone, though, is that is that um, a lot in the future we'll probably be uploading close to ten thousand clips mm. uh, within the next couple of years. Mm. Uh, we'll be uploading around ten thousand clips. They are clips of our current anything we've produced all up, up to, until this point. So you yeah. could say we've got a whole heap of extended videos. Yes, and. And then these extended videos are going to get divided up into clips. Mm -hmm. And the work from the records or transcriptions team, team, and also the work you and I do, mm -hmm. which is all about getting the outlines right, mm -hmm. and also reverse engineering the time codes on the outlines now. Mm -hmm. So anybody seeing a new outline now, you'll see there's time codes on the outlines. Which and helps you go to the point in the video which right. the outline refers and to. And even our transcriptions, that will also have time codes on them mm -hmm. as well that match the time codes on the outline. Mm -hmm. so you know what bits match where and everything. And there's a purpose to all this in that we can automate our clipping process. Mm -hmm. And and when I say automate, unfortunately, YouTube and other places haven't automated their side of it as much as what we're automating ours. And so what that means is, is that at some point in the future, we're going to need some volunteers who just log on to the clip channel on YouTube and just change data on the descriptions titles and everything. And Not so things. much the descriptions and titles because we can upload, we're uploading all that, but it's just data that YouTube, the YouTube API, the, the programming interface doesn't let us change mm -hmm. that you can only change on the net that we have to fix. And, and so there'll be thousands of them as well mm -hmm. that will also all be searchable by keyword and, mm -hmm. and subject matter because mm -hmm. um, we are actually being quite specific about the subject of each clip. Mm -hmm. So the beauty of this is that it means that truth will become more accessible mm -hmm. to everyone. At the moment, you have to remember, oh, what year was that talked about and what talk was that in? And, and you know, in one mm -hmm. particular talk, particularly a Q&A, mm -hmm. there could be hundreds of subjects sometimes um, and you don't know, oh, was it in this one or that one? And, and you know. At the moment, we have people who email our FAQ and office account and ask us about particular topics. And there's a few of us who've been around for a long time and go, I know he talked about it and it wasn't. And what colour shirt weekend? was he wearing what then? What colour shirt? And where was it? And we have to go through all of yeah. that. Once we have a, a search function, it's going to, you won't even have to email us about the question. You'll be That's able right. to search it and find a, a clip that so, answers your question. So these enhancements are very important mm. for a lot of reasons mm. and particularly 
Also, it's going to mean that all of our volunteers' time is not consumed yes. just answering questions. Yes. Because that, that can be a major problem. We yeah. can't produce new things while we're just answering questions about old things. Yeah. So, so we want to get to the stage where we're producing new things and the, the old things all look after themselves and everybody can find everything in the old thing. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the way we do that is through this, this process that we've now devised that allows us to clip everything, to produce outlines and transcripts and reverse engineer outlines and transcripts, but also upload huge amounts of, of information that allows you to find the material yes. that, uh, that you're looking for. And this is going to be a key part of helping the knowledge about divine truth grow. Yeah. And so that's why we're so passionate about getting it done. We are, and mm. I also have dreams in the future um, of utilising um, but the outlines as well as, so for example, for an assistance group, there's outlines, there's transcripts, and then at, there's a lot of various clips which cover those same topics we, that you've talked about at other times. I would like to create books. I would like to edit um, all of that material into a seamless kind of easy to read and understand book mm. for people because I'm, I'm a book lover. I, I love mm -hmm. books and I, I've learned a lot from books in my life and so there's a lot of other potentials that we have through all of these key, the work yeah. that you do, the work that the production team does and the transcribing and translation team does it. So it's all, we do, we do spend a lot of time in production, but a lot of it is because we have a really long range view of how this information can be used and the potentials for the information. Yeah, and we've got, you know, obviously the transcription team has done this for years now, mm -hmm. and but also we've got Kate Eckersill who's helping us with programming side of things. So once we get our programs all up to speed as well, and then it means that time, it, it can, our time, your, mm -hmm. your, uh, you and my time, can be mostly spent sharing mm -hmm. new material which is where we're, we want to get back to that because yeah. uh, the last few years has all been about tidying up all of our old material mm -hmm. to, so that it's accessible yeah. because, uh, uh, you, know, you know, obviously things have grown from a very odd ad hoc in a very ad hoc way and now it's sort of getting to be big enough where we have to go, oh, hang on a sec, we've got to get everything standardised and, and so that all the material is so accessible to everybody in the world. And that's been our major goal, and and probably is going to take another year, yeah, uh, to finalise that particular goal. But once that goal is finalised, we can get back to having more, you know, seminars where we go and visit locations and everything, and and know that the background processes mm -hmm. are all in place to get that material delivered to the world in, in a lot of different ways so that it's accessible. Yeah, and we should probably say, shouldn't we, that we know that we haven't seen a lot of people in person for a, for a, few, a couple of years now. And we do really love that. We love seeing people and, yeah. and, and we miss engaging. We miss that. We miss it a lot. But, yeah. but every new thing we do, if it if it's still got the old data system, yeah. it just creates a bit more of a nightmare for us <laughs> later on to address. So we're trying to get rid of the nightmare of the old yeah. in the sense of getting rid of the problems with the data and everything. Yeah and conform it all to what we now know is going to be our best solution yeah. and uh, and then carry forward from there. And when we carry forward from there, producing new information should be a lot easier. And by that stage, we should also have more pr production assistants, mm. you know, people who are producing the data, who know what they're doing up to speed. And so by a few years' time, we're hoping to have more editors involved. So that means you and I, in a course of a week, instead of spending five days doing all this other work mm. and just four or eight hours doing production, yeah. you know, where we We're talk talking, about yeah. something, you and I could spend like every afternoon for that whole week in production. Yeah, which would be uh, great. You know, where we're producing 20 or 30 hours of material mm -hmm. and, and we know that the rest of it is handled at the moment. I have a large involvement in handling the rest of it. So, so obviously that takes away from what we can actually spend in actually doing. And, and it also means too that if we, uh, and if we had enough donations coming in, we could even consider our switching team traveling with us. Yes. And if that happened, then that switching team could send the data by mail back to the production team and, and we could be on the road uh, doing presentations still, mm -hmm. while the data from our last presentation from being on the road somewhere else it's is back edited. home getting edited and produced mm -hmm. and uploaded. And so everyone, we can be doing new data and, and visiting new people and everything 
while the old stuff is still all being produced. So that's our long term, longer term sort of goal yeah. that, that, you know, when we do travel, um, that, that all of this other stuff that I normally do uh, is all happening behind the scenes so that we can get on with just sharing more information and, sh and demonstrating, you know, God's truth in a more practical way. Mm. Um, and and people benefiting from those interactions rather than it all just being stuck in this place where we can't do much more because because there's too much involvement from mm -hmm. us in getting out what we've already done yeah. you know so so this yeah. is where we're trying to move forward in this whole process definitely yeah yeah <laughs> so that, that sort of gives people a bit of an idea of what we're doing in terms of divine truth operations i suppose what we have been doing we'll get on at the end we'll talk about really even more about what we want to do personal in the things we want to do yeah, yeah but, you know these are things we're trying to do just to give people uh, a greater accessibility to information because yeah. um, we realize that without the accessibility to information people can't hear the truth if you can't hear the truth, you can never apply it. Yes. So, you know, it's very important that people are at least able to hear it mm -hmm. worldwide. You know, obviously we haven't even talked about things like translation and other things yeah. like that at this stage, but you know, that that's a whole, uh, you know, thing in itself that, yes. that needs to also happen. And, and we don't have a lot of translators or anything available to us at this stage. And I also find that many people put their own personal inflection in things when they translate. So we're, we're wanting to get our transliteration process, yes. which is word by word uh, sort of translation occurring mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. uh, and then have a native speaker check it. Uh, for grammar for and uh, cohesion. For yeah. cohesion, but, mm -hmm. but not to change the meaning. Mm. And this is what we find frequently when people translate our material, they also change the meaning mm. and we don't want that to occur either. Yeah. So, so there's a whole heap of things we're also managing there, but that, they're gonna be down the track because the, the data issue has been our main issue at this stage we've yes. had to sort. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay. So that's a technical discussion, guys. I know it's a bit technical. <laughs> you don't normally hear that kind of thing from me, but um, it just gives you a bit of background about what we've been doing and why we've been so busy and why it seems like we're not updating our website as much mm -hmm. as we were and why we're not putting new things on YouTube as much as we were. There's obvious reasons going on behind the scene for all of that, which I just we just wanted to explain. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, one, one of the things I would probably like to say to all of our viewers and people who donate to us is that people can see that from this discussion we've just had that that you know, one way that we get a lot of assistance is via donations, because without the donations, we can't pay for people to live mm -hmm. to help us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that that's one thing is that one way we get a lot of assistance is via donations. But there are a lot of people who would like to help. They don't have the ability to donate, but they'd mm -hmm. like to help. But it is difficult for us to uh, to engage that help when it's not here near us. Mm. And um, the main reason why is, you know, well, there's a lot of reasons why, really, because we can't manage the processes and keep them in harmony with what we believe they need to be, you know, in harmony with God's truth without there being some close contact. Mm -hmm. And so um, those people who are currently be with, near us who have changed their lives to be here full time, mm -hmm. you can see how much we appreciate them because... Yes. Um, without their assistance, um, a lot of these things that we're thinking of doing could never get done. Mm -hmm. And we would be back like 10 years ago, just going to a venue, some people get out the camera and record it or whatever, mm -hmm. and that would be it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And there'd be no major sharing of that information anywhere in the world. It would just be pr privately kept most probably. Mm -hmm. And obviously our first century life was like that, where mm -hmm. We, you know, we'd visit a location, everything was word of mouth. You'd sit there and talk about it, you know, talk about the truth. But of course, the truth would get highly diluted by the emotions of the people. So it would turn into, you know, when they relate it to someone else, it would be diluted again. And then when they relay it to somebody else, it would be diluted again and so forth. The Chinese whispers yes. concept, you know, how yeah. everything gets diluted by our own condition. Yeah. And the, the beauty with the people helping us is that helping us prevent that from happening because because they're involved in this production process and getting the audios and the videos out it prevents the dilution of what we're sharing mm -hmm. and it also means that everybody can sort of hear it firsthand instead of hearing it way down the track yes you know through a word of mouth somewhere 
And so this is why we are so focused on trying to get a team of people with us here helping us because we with that team we can help them personally mm -hmm. to 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 address the emotional issues that prevent them from accurately reflecting and sharing god's truth on the planet mm -hmm. and and their desire to engage that process with us is really really good so i'd just like yeah. to say thank you to those people i, I agree wholeheartedly a lot I mean, of other people offer help but they're not willing to move or mm -hmm. not willing to you know be involved on a daily basis mm -hmm. and that kind of help is much more difficult to engage. You know, we can do simple like day projects or whatever where people yep. can come and visit for a day or a week project where people come and visit for a week or whatever. But when it comes to actually doing a day by day thing that needs to be done to keep everything being shared, mm -hmm. you know, this is where we do need people close by who are also up to speed technically and emotionally mm -hmm. to, to cope with the work, work that we're doing. Yeah, and I see it, it's like a twofold process that's occurring with the people who are here nearby helping us on a fortnightly basis. And that is that they have in their hearts this really strong desire that what is being presented is presented in its best format that's most reflective of the truth of what's happened. Uh, and they because, believe it to be true in their heart. Yes. Like, so, so that's a big thing too. A lot of people offer to help, but they don't really believe what I'm saying to them. So you know, it's very hard to accept help from a person who really would like to change what you're saying. Because um, we don't want it changed, we want it le left how it is, you know, yeah. how, it, how, it, how it has been. And if we do change it at some point in the future, if we do update things, which naturally we're going to do, because mm -hmm. as you get closer to God and as you get closer to the truth, you'll share more truth and sometimes that truth will be seemingly, uh, will build upon the last truth that you've already shared. We want to do that, of course, but but we don't want it to be modified already by the people who are sharing. Mm -hmm. we, we want it to be how it was or how it is, not mm -hmm. how how they think it should be. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So there's that there's yeah. that dedication within them, which is really wonderful. Yeah. But the second part of it is is because we're all engaged together regularly on a fortnightly basis. There's a lot of issues that are being confronted in each of us. And because we each have that desire to grow in our relationship with God and to live in harmony with God's definition of love of each other and ourselves, a lot of things are being addressed emotionally from a soul perspective by each of us consistently. Hmm. And we're holding ourselves and you hold us to a sort of a standard that ensures that we are continuing to grow. Hmm. And the, the benefit I see of that is it's not just that then what you are teaching is presented in its most pure format, but also there's a group of people who are developing themselves to a point where one day, in perhaps not such a distant future, they will also be able to be the primary source of teaching just mm. as you have been. Yes. Uh, and to me, that's a wonderful thing that we have going on here. And it is people's donations that are helping us to do that towards that end. And so those of you who have donated and who do donate to us regularly, uh, I don't even know if you know how much you're potentially benefiting the world, really. Mm. Uh, and, mm. and so we do really thank you yeah. for that opportunity to grow that uh, team. Yes, and, and uh, obviously some people would like to be in the team, but, you know, they're in a different country or something and they can't mm -hmm. be. And obviously we would like to get this kind of thing set up in different countries. Mm -hmm. But to do that, there has to be some very well spiritually developed people who are connected to God in love to do that. And what we find still is that most people who listen are very selective. Mm. And it's only when they have these personal interactions with us that they realize how selective they've actually been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then, and then, then your sincerity is tested. Yeah. And once your sincerity is tested, frequently people switch from being an observer to being a participator. Mm. And once you become a participator, which, which the few people who are helping us here have become, mm -hmm. they, their whole lives is affected by it now. So all of their financial resources are put into helping as well. And all of their, you know, their whole day to day lifestyle is, is reflecting, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the pro this process of sharing God's truth with the world. Mm -hmm. And so in a lot of ways that, that's, 
you know, what people's donations are also helping us achieve by to get to get a group of people together who actually do have a sincere heartfelt desire to practice what is what is taught and actually develop their own relationship with God to the extent that they themselves will be able to share and be example of what it means to live the way, live God's way. Yes, mm. and, and I think that demonstration is often far more powerful than verbal words. Always more powerful. And, and mm. that's something that we'll talk about our personal progression at the end, but um, that's something that I've deeply reflected on in the last few months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, there's practical things that are happening because of people's donations, but there's also these, uh, what I would classify as spiritual things that are happening mm -hmm. that need to happen mm -hmm. if divine truth is going to grow as a, as, a, as a, you know, if God's truth is going to be delivered to the planet, these things must happen. And it's very important that God's truth isn't diluted. Yeah. And everybody has their own ideas about what, they think I'm saying is right compared to whether they know what I'm saying is right from God's perspective or not. And, and I, I am very concerned sometimes about how much it gets diluted mm. uh, because it, frequently the dilution is more damaging than the actual thing it's trying to overcome. Yeah. And so th this is why we're so concerned about recording events mm -hmm. and so concerned about sharing the recordings of events so that things cannot be misinterpreted mm -hmm. and so forth. Yeah. Mm. And why we're also quite careful to say, no, this is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. which I've said many times, mm -hmm. versus this is God's truth about a matter. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm allowed to share my personal opinion just like anybody else is, but, but at the end of the day, I prefer to speak about what God's truth is about a matter. Mm -hmm. right? And, uh, you know, this and and if someone dilutes that truth mm -hmm. through their own personal opinion to me that is a damaging thing mm -hmm. and uh, and and that's what we're trying to also address by having this method of sharing that we've now engaged yeah 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 very good that probably leads us on to talk a little bit about uh god's way events mm. because in god's way uh we do have a number of things that we're doing with the people who are already uh, volunteering for Divine Truth, uh, and uh, many of those people are members of God's Way, because God's Way shares this goal that we just expressed, which is to have a group of people actively demonstrating uh, different <laughs> methods, but also through just their own lived example in their own personal life of what it means to embrace Divine Truth teachings practically. So um, some of the events, well, the major event that um, is coming up is a volunteer selection project. Mm -hmm. But before I talk about the specific instance of that project, um, why don't we just introduce what the God's Way Divine Truth Selection Project is all sure, about? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So obviously, um, a lot of people offer to help us, mm -hmm. and many do it um, due to different addictions they have. Some do it with a sincere heart. Some do it because they want to feel good about themselves. And there's all sorts of reasons why a person might desire to offer their services. Mm -hmm. Some of those reasons are pure, and some of those reasons are not so pure generally. Mm -hmm. So we needed to create a way that we could start weeding out the impure reasons from the pure ones, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that makes sense to our listeners. And, and to do that, what we've done is develop the program. And when I say weave, there's a team of people, uh, Tristan and Eloisa, so Eloisa Lytton Hitchens, Tristan Miller, yourself and myself. Mm -hmm. We've worked on developing a program which Tristan and Eloisa deliver, mm -hmm. which, which is about helping people understand what they're actually volunteering for, mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what they'll be involved in doing. And, it's, oops, sorry. and also what kind of attitudes and emotions they're going to need to do it. Yes. So that's... Uh, that's so, yeah, so basically we have a program. Previously it's run, been run over, is it nine or 14 weeks? Nine weeks. Nine weeks, yeah. Nine 14 weeks, 14 days, days nine, nine weeks, weeks. yeah. Uh, where people come and engage in some activities, all kinds of different activities, but basically the entire purpose of the the project, we call it, is to 
not measure their aptitude at, or skill at various specific tasks, but to measure their desire and their sincerity. How sincere are you really about what your, about your statement that you want to help divine truth or God's way in its aim to deliver God's truth to the world? Mm. Uh, and how sincere are you about engaging the very principles involved in both organisations personally for yourself? And that's usually the place where most people aren't, aren't as you mentioned earlier, really then don't, don't have a good assessment of how sincere they really are Not really. until they're confronted by activities and people who are saying, this is God's principles in action. Yeah. Uh, this is where you're missing the mark of love. This is where you're sinning in relation to that principle. That's right. And a lot of people then uh, find that they don't actually want to engage. Well, then they sin some more generally. <laughs> they get angry or upset <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> about yeah. Yeah. what's being said. Yeah. And, and this is a, a really good uh, sort of test for people who do want to sincerely help to, to actually attend the the volunteer selection program mm. and uh, and we have many of those projects happening mm. over the course of the, the years and we've already done two and done two, yeah. we've got one more coming up straight after the assistance group mm. in 2019 and uh, we'll talk about that more in a minute but you can see that the volunteer selection program itself is designed specifically to see the people who are more sincere about the fact that they've got issues mm -hmm. and that they want to deal with them God's way mm. and they want to become a loving person and they want to volunteer to share God's truth with the world instead of it all being about them. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because what, what we notice is most people who come to the program initially come because it's all about them. Oh, mm. I thought that I'd benefit from the program. Well, mm -hmm. no, it's not about your benefit of the program. Mm -hmm. It's about are you prepared to benefit the world with your activity? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it's about, right? Yeah. And, and so we're trying to get people away from this thing of, I want more, I want more, I want more, to this place of, I want to be able to be in a space with my condition, my desire to love, I want to be in a space where I can share more. Mm -hmm. and, and so the program is just the beginnings. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's for us to, we, to, to sort of sort out the people who, uh, actually have that as their goal mm -hmm. compared to those people who say they have that as their goal but but quite obviously through the activities we find out that they don't <laughs> yeah it's it's sort of a change of pace uh, or a change of format for a lot of people because a lot of people are very used to receiving uh, personal gifts attention teaching from divine truth the organization but yeah. this so from us you and I yes. they're receiving the personal gifts but most of it is dismissed, to be frank, because the trouble with a person who has emotional injuries is they're very prepared emotionally to dismiss anything that does not agree with their preconceptions. Yes. And so you don't have that opportunity in this program. This, <laughs> this volunteer selection program doesn't give you the opportunity to dismiss anything. <laughs> and that, that's why it's such a good program, I feel. Uh, I, I feel so. Yeah. So it is, it is for a different group of people. That is people who don't just want to be um, engaged in receiving. They, they're saying, I want to give something. So yeah. that's a the kind of prerequisite or that's why you should apply to be involved um, and then obviously throughout the the time we we assess whether that's a real thing within you so so far we've held it twice and um, people have come some people have come internationally to be involved uh, and some people are from the local area mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of people have been quite challenged by the feedback that they receive. It's, we make it very clear that at the beginning you will receive direct personal feedback, which is different from assistance. We're not, this is not about teaching you a new principle or helping you to get over your resistance. No, we just want, because this is about supposedly about the participant wants to give something rather than to receive that help. Exactly. And so we very kind of clear that we just give the feedback and we give people the opportunity to deal with their resistance, but we don't coach most, people through it. And to be frank, most don't. No. Unless you coach somebody, most people, most people want that personal coaching to get through something. Yeah. And when you don't coach them, you soon see yeah. how, how little personal aspiration 
they actually yeah. have to actually do something about a problem. And, and it, that's mm. really crucial mm. for each of us to develop that personal aspiration just for our own personal relationship with God. And, and, and to be frank, we don't want in Divine Truth or God's Way organisations people who are resistive mm -hmm. and who are very uh, reticent to deal with their personal problems. We yeah. want people who are completely opposite, <laughs> who, who are really desirous of dealing with their problems. Well, in fact, they're the only people that we engage with within either organisation of, now. Of course. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, in terms of a day-to-day, -day, you know, you, you could call it a business sort of transaction, but it's not. It's, it's we get things done, yes. we, we get jobs done. And in terms of the day-to-day -day getting things done, we don't want to deal with people's resistance mm -hmm. and people's and people's constant bickering or fighting or trying to up one-manship, you know, yeah. their directors or, you know, anything else. We, yeah. we, we're interested in seeing the true attitude of the individual mm -hmm. and, uh, and the program has been developed to expose the true attitude of the individual. As a result, most people don't pass the program. And it's, we sort of say um, uh, people either complete it or they don't. So, and even and, the people who complete it often don't pass it. So yeah. you can complete it without passing yeah. it. <laughs> so, so you, sometimes we ask people if they're, they're very resistive and very difficult to work with, we ask them over the course of the, of the program uh, that they don't. That they and some get attending. removed within the first week because yep. of their, you it's know. It's very evident. It's very evident. And also frequently, you know, they're very angry or upset. Yep. And, and we, it doesn't matter whether they've come from overseas or mm -hmm. from anywhere here, we just remove them straight away. You know, yeah. you're not suitable, you're too angry and you, haven't, you don't want to deal with the anger. Yeah. And so you need to go away and work yourself out with regard to that. And we, yeah. we don't help them work themselves out. We just say, this is the situation where we can't, mm -hmm. we're not going to do any more with you. Yeah. The people who present the program don't deserve the anger of the mm -hmm. participants. Mm -hmm. And so we just immediately remove them. Just like God would say, no, you, you know, this is the way it is, yeah. you know, and we're going to do exactly, uh, we're going to keep doing that because yeah. it is the most effective way to determine who's really sincere. That's right. And uh, Tristan and Eloisa lead the group in a very beautiful way. They're yeah. very kind and humble and, and clear loving. and direct yeah. and loving. And I feel it's an incredible gift that they give to yeah. others in the way that they deliver it. it so, is, yeah. so some people are asked to leave us before the completion. Some people, we get to the end, um, you very lovingly give a lot of feed or some feedback to directly to individuals throughout the course. Yeah. And then some people get to the end, they finish it, but we say, look, we can't work with you yet. These are the problems. You've you got to go deal away with these and problems, deal with them. Yeah. Some people, we get to the end and say, great, we can engage with you, but really this is just where it's now starting to get real and we then we're finding we find other issues with people yeah many after that uh, don't want to do it because we because yeah. because the course is very gentle in yes. a lot of ways even though it's quite uh, it's it's uh, specific but gentle yeah, yeah. Uh, and when i but when people come to interact with us on a day-to-day -day mm -hmm. level they realize oh this is feed kind of feedback it's going to happen maybe on time. a daily basis yeah. And for most people who get into that stage, they go, I don't want that, mm. you know, and that is a level of their sincerity, yeah. but that's where they're at. So, yeah. so some of the people who have passed also finish up walking away as well. Yeah. And we're left with yes. generally just a very few number of people who we can then work with over the coming years, yes. you know. And, um, and we would like to see that change, of course, yeah. But that's only going to change with the sincerity of the individuals mm -hmm. changing. Mm -hmm. And what we notice is when you can listen to information without ever being personally challenged, um, you can be very, very selective about what you actually apply, mm -hmm. if you apply anything at all. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you're so addicted to listening to the information that you don't apply anything. And, and that is uh, often the case with people listening to Divine Truth where they believe they're applying it, mm -hmm. but they haven't yet had even the emotional breakthrough yet to actually apply it. So, so it, it, during the course, they find those things out very rapidly, of course. So. And that, that's a one, I think it's a wonderful thing. And I, yeah. really, I really have um, an appreciation for people who, who 
face their resistance during the course and and they deal with it yeah. or they come they some people have re-enrolled and that's great to see as well because yeah. they they want to keep at this process yeah. yeah so that's good too so we do allow re-enrollments yep. uh, just like you know if you go to school and you fail you go can go back the next year <laughs> that's fine <laughs> and but we don't allow a lot of uh, what i'd classify as manipulative or controlling or or angry behavior yeah. in fact we don't allow that at all yeah um, so you know anybody who engages that behavior is quickly removed from the group yeah and well. a lot of people are shocked because people who do have those kind of behaviors usually have a life where they can get away with that yes the, in their life the people around them um allow for manipulation and control exactly and <laughs> because we create an environment that doesn't a lot of people are confronted with the fact that gee i am quite manipulative and it's just that everyone agrees to it that i didn't even really notice it's been with me since i was mm. a kid i didn't yeah. even know it's the things you don't notice that are the worst things yeah. generally yeah. Uh, the things you notice or at least have some inkling of you can work through but it's the mm. things you don't notice you, it requires a deep level of humility for somebody to, to hear it from somebody else and then to actually say, well, yes, this is a problem in terms of my love and am I going to do something mm. about this problem? And, and that's what those of us who are interacting together each fortnight, we, we appreciate the feedback because we know yeah. I wouldn't have noticed otherwise or I'm, mm. I'm, I know something's not right, but I don't know exactly what it is. Yeah, and even with some of the ones who are uh, volunteering now who've passed the course, there's a, still a level of resistance mm. in them that we still need to overcome. Yeah. And obviously we do focus on overcoming those resistances, you know, mm -hmm. but, but we first have to determine whether a person can even be engaged in that or if, yeah. it, if just one, th one activity is going to make a person you know, be unloving, then at the end of the day, uh, you know, obviously they don't qualify for helping other people and being loving to other people. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely. so that's the purpose of the program. And it's a very, I feel very good program. And the guys have now got a lot of documentation about the program. And soon the documentation about the program will also be put and shared on the God's Way website, yes. which means then that people can actually look at the content of the program before they even come to the program. Yes, Eloisa and I have been yeah. working on putting together a manual now mm. that reflects the principles also that we are, uh, that are behind each activity, what That's we're right. assessing, and also the principles that we have in mind as we're designing things, what facilitators are looking at personally within them, all kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, that really help people to understand what God's way in action is yes. just through the way that we implement the, the project. And all that like, large amount of documentation will be put on the internet at yeah. some point in the future so that any person who does enroll knows exactly what they're in for as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's already some information up there, there that is, lets yeah. uh, potential participants know That's right. the way we approach And them. there is, of so. course, a summary of old, old, uh, some old activities. Of the, some of the old groups as well yeah. up on the site too, yeah. so yeah. people can see what other people thought about the, <laughs> the whole thing as well. <laughs> yes. All right. So let's get on to talk about the 2019 we call it an instance of the project. So we, we're running the same kind of um, course again and again at different times. And so this is the 2019 instance. Yeah. And we actually now have a new format, don't we, for how we're going to implement it? Yes, and we're really looking forward to this actually mm -hmm. because it's a, it's a five week program now instead of a nine week. It has, it has five days on for, and then a, and then and a, uh, like nine days off, it's yeah. a weekend off, and then the next five days is off. And when I say it's off, it's not that off for the participants because mm -hmm. there's a whole heap of research and preparation and talks that they've got to give, that they've got to yeah. prepare and everything. So so the five days where they don't have contact, they're doing all their homework. No, they have five days contact they have five, and then that's nine what I'm saying. So they you have, said five days. No, but it's, days. You know, if they have the weekend oh, off, I'm yes, saying it's sorry. five days, weekend, five days, weekend, five days like that yeah. for a five week period. But for there's five days on, and then there's a weekend. You can yeah. have a break if you want during the weekend. <laughs> then there's five days off. Yeah. But the participants are actually having to do all their preparation, all their research, all of their preparation of talks. They actually yes. give talks and everything uh, and that they've got to prepare. There's a lot of activities they've got to prepare. There's a lot of joint activities mm -hmm. they've got to do in the week off as mm -hmm. well. And so they have that so-called week off, yeah. but it's not a week off for them. 
and then there's a week on again and a week off and then a week last week on so there's a total of 14 days in the in the in the five week period of the contact time of, of contact with time us. with yes. with the group of yes. people who are already members or volunteers and that's Sorry, that's so, unique, isn't it? Because yeah. in the past, it was mainly participants were engaged with Tristan and Eloisa directing. That's right. Now, because we've we've kind of condensed this time period, everyone who is a permanent sort of uh, active member or volunteer of Divine Truth or God's Way will be interacting directly with all the participants. Yes. They'll be engaged in some of our on the week routine, on. in the week on, yep. some of our routine, our current projects and activities, they'll yep. be involved in yep. um, and they'll get to have a real taste of what's yeah. going on in both So there's construction projects, there's the environmental projects, there's clean up projects, yes. there's cleaning projects, yes. there's there's all sorts of projects that, mm -hmm. that the per, that the five week, the five day on, yep. you get to experience a day of at least here and there. And, and get to feel uh, like what we do. Mm -hmm. So you get a bit of a taste of what we do on our normal, uh, in our life, you know. Yeah. And and the beauty of doing it that way is that all of the current members also are involved on those same projects. So, so what that means is that you get to also talk to, if you want to, talk to the current members and volunteers about what they've experienced with these particular things as well. Yes. And, and in addition to that, you and I do, we, we've got recording during that period. Uh, like Lena and I will be doing production work during that period, which people will get a bit of a, at least to see us, what, what, what we do. So people will get a, a big taste about what, what volunteering for God's Way and Divine Truth is really going to be about. And so w what I like about the change of format is that it's more condensed. Mm -hmm. It means that overseas visitors don't have to stay as long. No. And it's not as costly in terms of staying somewhere. We at this stage don't have uh, the accommodation to look after people. It's one of God's ways, which is aims. one of our projects, yes. is to get accommodation to yeah. look after people coming. Yeah. But um, but there's not enough people to build it yet, so <laughs> so we need to get it going. So so you know these are all programs and projects we've done, designs and everything. People will see all of that mm -hmm. all happening. They'll visit the different uh, properties that yep. uh, God's Way owns at this stage. Uh, to see what we're doing on each of those properties as well. And they'll start to get a bit of a taste of what's involved in terms of being a volunteer, you know, on a daily basis mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm. And obviously there's a difference between our members and our volunteers. Yeah. Volunteers can volunteer whenever they like. You know, they can just do one day every three months if they like or one day every month or whatever. Mm -hmm. Doesn't That's up to them. Our members are every week, every, every fortnight, fortnight involved in mm. every week, in, in the entire week. Yeah all day for the entire week so our members uh, have a lot more commitment mm -hmm. if you like and and also have changed their life to suit uh, having that commitment and, and there you're referring to God's way members divine truth God's doesn't way have members, members yeah. Yeah. God's, divine truth doesn't have members no. which is basically a company for you and I yeah. to share material but God's way has members and those members are very dedicated to making sure like living this way all their life, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. To become a member, you have to be a volunteer for six months. But to become a volunteer, you've got to get through the volunteer <laughs> selection program. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I recommend it. I think, I just think it's a, a great way. Like, it's not... If you're just coming for a purely selfish purpose to to get um, feedback on your spiritual condition, then that's you disqualified basically. Um, and, and also that'll be exposed very rapidly, be, yeah. usually within the first week, yes. and probably will ask you to leave after the first week. Yes. And many people do get asked to leave after the first yeah. week. We've had you know probably ten to twelve people out of out of what. 30, 30 or 35. Mm, always know the yeah, exact numbers. That have been asked to leave in the very first week. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people do get removed yeah. in the first week. But but if you do have some sincerity or feel like you want to actually start to give, pass, pay forward, if you like, the gift that you've received through hearing about Divine Truth, um, then attending, it just it has so many benefits for yourself as yeah. well as for the world. And I, I really recommend it. And um, as you said, it takes away the selectivity that you have in your own living room of deciding what you need to work on and what you don't. Mm. Uh, and to me, that's an immense benefit. Yeah, yeah, when you're sitting in front of a telly watching a video, you can be very, very selective yeah. about what you actually apply and what you think applies to yeah. you. 
Yeah. When you've got people on a daily basis telling you, actually, no, you're out of line there, mm. or no, this is out of harmony with love there, and, and you didn't even realise it, that can be very helpful to your yeah. progress. But also it can help identify whether you are sincere or not, like whether you're really sincere about you know, following God's way or, you, or, or do you just like the thought of it? <laughs> Is it for you or not? You yeah. know, a lot of people, not a lot of people, a few people have come and said, look, I don't even think I want this as my way of life now because it's just, I don't want it. Yeah, yeah. No, fair enough. It's up to you. Up don't to you. recommend it, but it's up to you. you but know? sooner or later in the spirit yeah. world, you're going to have to cope, with, uh, cope <laughs> with this kind of life eventually, eventually. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's what I find quite interesting in itself too, is that people don't realise that the way we're trying to construct the organisation mm. is the way in which things happen in the spirit world a lot. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if you can't fit into the organisation very well, you're going to struggle fitting into the spirit world pretty well too, you know. You'll have to go to one of the locations where anybody does anything. <laughs> and those locations are always not very nice. <laughs> not that fun for anyone, really. Yeah, that's yeah. right. <laughs> All right, well, that's that's great. Mm. Hopefully we've given you a bit of an idea of what's involved there. Mm. Um, and we are, I am, really looking forward to meeting some of you who are already uh, enrolled. And I getting know. to know people better because, yeah. you know, in a seminar we get to deliver information we see your face and we can feel a bit of your emotion, but you know, we, you, know you don't get to know a person yeah. just by watching a video or, or being yeah. in a seminar with them or whatever. You get to know them by having day-to-day -day interactions yeah. over a period of time. And, yeah. you know, so we get to have day-to-day -day interactions over a period of time and that's wonderful. Yes. People get to see, you know, what's going on, but also they get to see, you know, like how much they've actually dismissed mm. as well and how mm. much they've really absorbed. Yeah. So that's all good for everyone, I feel. It's great for yeah. all of us. <laughs> so we're looking forward to it, you we know, are. aren't we? We are. And I'm sure, you know, the presenters are looking forward to it too. And, yeah. and, and also we've got all these projects, of course, going on all the time that the members are involved in. Mm -hmm. And during that five-week period, it's like we have, you know, 20 or 30 extra people to help with those projects. Mm. And so that uh, is also great because even if those people don't pass the particular project, you know, the, 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 the selection project. program, yeah. And they have at least uh, Given, had some yeah. exposure to the day-to-day -day things that we do. Yes. Trying to, you know, improve, you yeah. know, things and collect data to share mm -hmm. with the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful.